Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 536, Women, Birth Control Pills, and Hair Loss. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today we're going to talk about the effect of birth control pills on your hair growth. And I bet you never thought about it, and it's rarely talked about even to doctors when we're training or when we're talking to patients, we don't talk about it. But taking low-dose birth control pills or low-low-dose birth control pills, which means they have either 20 micrograms of uh, estradiol or 10 micrograms of estradiol, that's low and and very low, Uh, those are considered low-dose birth control pills, and those can put you in a state of menopause. Estrogen is necessary for your hair to grow. So if you're on those low-dose birth control pills, watch out. If your hair is falling out, then you need to go to a higher-dose birth control pill, one that has 30 micrograms, 35 micrograms, or even 50 micrograms to get the estrogen high enough for your hair to grow. So doctors think that decreasing the dose of estrogen in low dose in birth control pills, getting to a lower dose is healthier. And that's because the drug reps tell us that. And that's also because the newest birth control pills are the low, low dose ones, and drug companies need to sell a new birth control pill. So the trend is lower, and then we're seeing a lot of risks. I mean, a lot of side effects and risks. So they tell patients it's healthier and say that it decreases your risk of uh, blood clots. But in general, blood clots have to do with your own genetics, not necessarily birth control pills. Birth control pills can make your own genetics worse, but it's not a good reason to go to a low or a low, low dose birth control pill. 30 micrograms is low enough. So When we're talking to a drug rep, they say, this is safer. They don't tell us anything about the side effects or anything else. And then we go, oh, great. We have a new birth control pill. Let's try this. So your birth control pills are changed. And I'm talking to people who are cycling, who need birth control. This is, this is the average, you know, 15 to 45 year old who's on birth control pills. So you have to watch out for this. If you find that after you are switched to a low or a low, low dose birth control pill, your hair starts falling out. It is usually the fact that you don't have enough estrogen to make your hair grow. Some other things that happen um, when you have low estrogen is that you get a very thin lining to the vagina, so you have painful intercourse. It feels like sandpaper. Or you also get a thinner, smaller vagina, so it won't stretch when you have intercourse. The other things occur, you may even have hot flashes. You may have dry skin. Your libido usually goes down because you don't have any testosterone and you become fatigued. Those are all things that women who are young do not need. And birth control pills are protecting us from birth but and getting pregnant. But if you can be on a different dose, which is effective, then why not increase the dose so that none of these things happen. And generally, if you're on a 30 microgram pill or higher, you won't have these side effects. You may have the low libido because all pills decrease your libido, but you won't have the other side effects and you certainly won't have the hair loss side effect. Worse yet, low, low dose birth control pills aren't as effective. So if you take an antibiotic, while you're taking birth control pills, then you have a higher risk of getting pregnant if you're on a low dose or a low, low dose birth control pill. If you weigh over 200 pounds, then the low dose or the low, low dose is ineffective. So you should be on a higher dose to prevent pregnancy. So that can be an issue as well. Um, We have a huge problem 
in OBGYN that we're all tired, we're delivering babies at night, we're doing surgery during the day, we're seeing patients all day in the office, we're exhausted. So often we aren't reading our journals, we're getting our training from the drug reps. And that is all meant to make us write certain prescriptions. And that's not, that, that's not good advice because they're selling and we should be understanding the whole drug and why we would use it and why we wouldn't use it. And we need to know the side effects. But hair loss is not one of them that I have ever had a drug rep explain to me that low dose birth control pills would, cost, would cause. Recently I treated a patient who is a doctor and she's not an OBGYN, but she came to me, had her pellets, she felt great, and she had several things happen. One thing was that she was under a lot of stress. Uh, COVID is, is difficult if you're in an internal medicine or family practice. You're doing a lot more work, you're tired. So she, her cortisol went up, she was stressed, and that can make your hair fall out too. Um, she, at the same time, her thyroid dropped. So her thyroid was a little bit lower, that can cause hair loss. So there were multiple things that happened to her in her life that could have been the cause of hair loss. I tested DHT, which is a byproduct of testosterone, which can cause hair to thin, but not all over your head. It's usually just here and here. So the other two, cortisol and uh, high cortisol and low thyroid, can cause the whole head to, to uh, actually have hair fall out or hair break. So I checked those, found those, and remedied them, fixed them. Then as, as she, she was sure it was the testosterone because it didn't get better when I fixed those two other problems. Then she said, could it be that I was changed, my birth control pill was changed? And that was it. Because she was changed from a pill she'd been on for 20 years at a 30 microgram dose down to a 10 microgram dose, low, low estrogen. It has so low, her estrogen level was so low, and her FSH and LH were, were elevated like they shouldn't be with, with um, birth control pills, which means it's not as effective as a birth control method. It also means she didn't have enough estrogen to grow hair. So when I found that out and changed her back to her other pill, all was well. Everything started clicking again. She stayed on her thyroid. She, stayed, she was on endodrin for her high cortisol. And everything normaled out. So this is one of the things that no one had told her in medical school or at her doctor's office. And I'm not sure that the doctor even knew that this could be the cause of hair loss. Everybody thinks it's testosterone when, in fact, it's like 1% is from testosterone. So if, if you're using testosterone the way I prescribe it, which is pellets, other forms can be, can be worse. However, I'm thankful that I knew this and I did all the blood work to see what this pill was doing for her or to her so that I could then treat her hair loss by just changing her to a pill. Not, I mean, not putting creams on it, not sending her to Hans Wyman. I mean, I just changed her pill and that was it. And that should be something you think about if you're having hair loss while you're on a very low dose pill. You could mention it to your doctor just to open their mind to it and have them research it because they may not know about that. Now, to understand why this works, you have to understand the physiology of birth control pills. Birth control pills are estradiol and progesterone. The progesterone protects your uterus and causes you to have a period every month when you go off both of them, kind of like when you had a cycle. But birth control pills also go feedback to your brain after you take them, go through your stomach, they turn into estrone and estradiol, they, they go into your system, into your vasculature, and your blood, blood vessels go to your brain, to your pituitary, and should shut off FSH and LH. FSH and LH are the two hormones that make you ovulate and make you have a period and cycle and make estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone every month. The pill shuts that down. And so it, it completely cuts off 
the stimulation of your ovary. Then the pill supplies enough estrogen to replace a small amount so that you don't feel menopausal and that you don't have hot flashes and that you don't have a dry vagina and hair loss. These things are built into the pill at a 30 microgram and above level, they should keep you feeling young and healthy. They should give you enough estrogen that you don't feel menopausal. Menopause isn't fun, and menopause is really not fun for young, healthy women. So when you're thinking about the pill, it's not that the lower dose is not shutting down your own estrogen as much. It's basically replacing very little estrogen after it shut off your own estrogen production. So that's how you should think about it. It's a, it's, it's a little, it's a mind game to have to go through this. Um, when I tested her estrogen, you know, a normal estrogen in people not on the pill, just cycling, estradiol is between 60 and 250 micrograms, depending on where, uh, excuse me, not micrograms, nanograms per deciliter, depending on when you test it in the cycle. But that range, 60 to 250. And if you're on a 30 or more microgra uh, microgram pill, then it will be usually low, 5, 10. Uh, if you go to a very low pill, it's going to be very low, like you can't even measure it. So your estrogen's like a menopausal woman. The FSH, the stimulatory hormones from your pituitary gland, will be higher on a low-dose pill because it doesn't suppress the FSH as much, and it doesn't suppress the LH, so that puts you at risk for having a... a a pregnancy. So those are things that you have to watch. If you have a dry vagina, if you have painful intercourse, if you have dry skin and your hair's falling out, then this is something you should address with your OBGYN or family doctor so that you can add back a higher dose. So you have to actually look at the dose and say, I, I need something that has more estrogen. I'm not sure why we think the, the low, low dose is so safe. It really isn't. And certainly if you weigh over 200 pounds, I would never take anything under 30 micrograms. Maybe even 35 micrograms would be better. But I want you to watch out for your own health and ask the right questions so that you don't have hair loss from something that's supposed to keep you from getting pregnant and gives you the side effect that no one really considers as a side effect from your birth control pill. There are alternatives. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to get pregnant. You can, have a, you can have a better birth control pill or even change to a Mirena IUD. All of those things will keep your hair thick, but it, they are options for you, and you should discuss it with your OBGYN. So please stay safe and healthy, and keep an eye on your own health, and talk to your doctor about these things. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.